Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Spearhead Sundays. I'm joined by a very special guest, Struthless, a.k.a. Campbell. Welcome to the show, mate. Thanks for having me, Lou. I really appreciate it, man. No worries, dude. I mean, I'm trying to bank up six weeks of content, so at this point I would have a homeless man on the street just come ah. in and do the show. So you're, but, you, but I'm not there yet, so you're at least one step above them. So welcome, dude. Well, thank you very much, man. I think you and I are in a bit of a similar place with trying to bank up work. So, yeah. Yeah, because your, uh, your wife is uh, eight, almost going to go into labor. Nine months pregnant. Yep. Nine months pregnant. Oh, well. Yeah. If she does go into labor during this episode, can you just tell her to, like, relax? For, like, <laughs> twenty Or don't relax. Tell her to suck it in. I'll say like, you're overreacting. I, I know these things as a man and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really gaslight your wife as she yeah. goes into birth, goes into labor. Like you're acting crazy. Yeah. Your, your water didn't break. I spilt my tea. Yeah. <laughs> your baby. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. I, I made it. I know how it works. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you carried it, but I had to hear about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's the real that's the real struggle. Are you going to be – um? what end are you going to be at when, when she is giving birth? Are you going to be a head man or are you going to be down uh, where the action is? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind uh, birthing the child. That's sort of our plan. So, yeah, I wouldn't man. mind. You're Being brave. I don't, I don't, I want to be strictly head. I don't want to, I would like to see it upon delivery. I'm a post delivery man. I'm, I want to be up the head end for moral support and hand holding only. I don't want to play catch. My hands are my income. You know, I'm not getting knee squeezed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, dude. You're an illustrator. You've got a lot of things that you need to draw. You can't be, you know, putting your, your, your fingers in dangerous places. Yeah, she can uh, grab a foot while I deliver the baby in a sort of like a yoga pose. I think that'll yeah. be... Yeah. That's the best plan. <laughs> I, like, I like that. That's good. So you're going to be a father. That's exciting. Yeah, man. It's really, really, really cool. Yeah, it's very, very exciting. It's like... I don't know. You know, like uh, when you're a kid and it's about to be Christmas. Yeah. Basically like that. But Christmas is just, it just keeps changing when it's going to be. <laughs> and like you keep asking, yeah. which day is Christmas? And you're like, oh, we don't know. It'll just happen. You'll just wake up one day. It'll be Christmas. Yeah. So it's like all the excitement, none of the certainty. It's a really, this is a really interesting little moment to capture. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's cool. You're gonna be you're gonna be one of those cool dads as well. Are, is oh. that what you're kind of going for? Like cool dad with weird job? Uh, yeah, I suppose if I if I had to rebrand, that would be it. I wouldn't mind. Um, I've sort of like been um messing with the idea of rebranding to Yoga Dad. Like, oh yeah, like sort of the like I guess slightly. And this isn't my brand in any way at all as a human being. But, but it like, could be. But it could be. And that's kind of like, yeah, because I remember my grandpa growing up, he was a very, he was like hard on the hippie spectrum. Yeah. And then I'd wake up and he, he would have already been awake, you know, watching the sunrise for like two yeah. hours. And he'd be doing like these like sun salutes and downward dog and just like crazy sort of yoga moves. And then like, you know, he'd drink like a giant cup of tea and then fast yeah. for like eight hours. And I'm like, who the fuck are you, man? <laughs> but, <laughs> I love uh, those people. They're of, great. A bit of, oh, yeah, yeah. He was a... He was a character, man. Yeah. Yeah, my dad's my dad's a big hippie. He's got dreadlocks and everything like that. He's like a real like hippie dad. Like when he would pick me up from school, everyone would stare at him. Like that's the type huh. of dad. What did he drive? Uh just like a giant truck, like a like yeah. the equivalent of a big Hilux now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what 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 did your dad do for a coin? A carpenter. True. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, real working class environment I, I grew up in. Oh, weren't ya? Look at, not you? Like, not mom? like you bloody lefty arts majors. Uh, my mum was a preschool teacher. Okay. Oh, um, well, that's that's very humble and I'm very disappointed by that. Did you think I was a rich kid, Louie? <laughs> no, no. I just, I'm, I'm trying to think of anything. I just, uh, generally everyone I meet from Sydney is a rich kid, you know? Like if you're from Sydney and you're in entertainment, it's quite likely, you know? Oh yeah, I feel I do feel a bit isolated. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is your first time on Spearhead Sunnies. Why don't you tell people about who you are and what you do? Yeah, for sure. Um, my name is Cam. Uh, as Lewis said, I go by Struthless online. I'm yeah. an illustrator. I have an animation studio. Recently, an author. As of late last year, that's kind of cool. Wrote a book. I uh, got a YouTube channel. Um, I sort of I don't know. I just kind of like get a whim and change genres every year. It would seem. So last year I was going through a huge, I guess, personal development phase. Before that, yeah. it was like 
edgelord comic phase. And right yep. now I'm kind of like in a journalist phase, I think. So I'm kind of going okay. to like a weird sort of lust for niche documentaries. That's that must be so confusing to be like an employee at your animation studio. You rock up to work and you're like, "Hey guys, how good are like words?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "That's the exact opposite of what you told us we were going to be doing here." Oh uh, yeah, I mean, like the content I make and the content my studio make are, are different, which is good. Like, I, I have a genuine mm. business now, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I think my um my I don't know I don't even know what you call it. Sort of like frenetic attitude yeah. definitely bleeds into the culture. Yeah. No, that's that's ADHD. cool. So, is yeah. this animation studio a new thing for you? Um, it's I started it. We, me and my business partner Aaron started it in 2020 in July, mm. and we sort of started in our bedrooms and just tried the to get best out. time to start a business. Uh, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> well, actually, no, not a terrible time to start an animation business because, like, a yeah. lot of videos weren't able to make media. Um, mm. so like we sort of use that as our way in to get our first couple of clients and it would be things like we'd go to like record labels and do in animated interviews. Cause like everyone was getting bored of zoom. So like there was, there was a deep, oh, little, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So sort of like played the market, I guess. And, um, from that we ended up, I guess, winding, like finding ourselves into like a, I don't know, doing like a bit more fiction sort of work. So like we made like a pilot currently in chats with streamers and then, um, yeah, have been making sort of animated fiction for like NFT millionaires lately. Cause oh, they have yes, that's a, what a nice little niche you found because yeah, it, I'm into the yeah. NFT shit a little bit and I have never once seen a good animation. They all <laughs> promise like, Oh, we're going to do a great animation. And it's like, dude, you've, You've generated 10,000 pictures of octopuses that look like rapists. I don't want to watch that show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I um, I very much can relate to the cynicism around it. Um, yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's a, it's a pretty cool way to, I don't know, like for an animation studio to get fiction work. So like, and I think it's, yeah. I think it's cool. I think the NFT stuff will eventually be very great. I think yes. that a lot of it is just I mean, shit house. <laughs> yeah. But in, in like, yeah, in 10,000 years, I reckon there'll be one good project that manages to work out the technology in a way that benefits the rest of us. For now, it's mostly yeah. just monkeys with different facial expressions. Yeah. But eventually, it, I think it'll kind of be cool. So that's, I think that's awesome. I, I'm always fascinated by particularly Australians who have managed to create like a business out of creativity because that's like, so it's just generally impossible, you know, yeah. like as someone who also does it, it's like an impossible thing to pull off. Yeah. We have such a small market. It's not overly sustainable for <laughs> any of that. Yeah. Kind of now you're, you're trying to do like more journalism stuff. Yeah. So how does, how does that work as a, as a guy who kind of blew up on Instagram? Oh, um, I guess it just does. Right. Like you yeah. follow whatever you're, passionate about and then yeah. uh, that whatever's ringing true to you will ring true to the world so i think that's kind of been like my philosophy with making stuff like yes follow the fun in a way or like whatever i'm obsessed with instead of trying to deny it and build a brand as person mm. like social media strategy i just like be like okay i'm obsessed with this now and then i just follow that so that's kind of my i don't know experimental <laughs> it's a strategy i guess but um, oh, that's that's cool yeah so like i've sort of been um i think it started out with a couple of like really basic questions about art history. Um, yeah. Which is like, that makes me sound pretentious. Maybe I am. A absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. you are, you're, yeah, you're a guy that owns an animation studio in Sydney with, <laughs> with tattoos on his hands. Like you have to yes. embrace the pretentiousness dude. Yeah. Just like how I'm sitting here where with fucking adult braces. Like I look <laughs> like a freak. Okay. And that's just, that's just my lane now. You know, you're going into like wanky art journalism and I'm going into gap tooth braced freak. That's cool, man. Yeah. He yeah. Like inappropriate erections at hentai. Yeah. Oh, I would say very appropriate. Actually. That is the goal of hentai. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Off stage baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, nah, man. Like, yeah. So I sort of followed a whim and it kind of like started yeah. with, I guess like, you know, everything, everything good starts with being pissed off, I think. Yes. So, so definitely. Like, yeah. My, the first thread that I pulled, I think was like, I was a little bit pissed off at like the contentification of pretty much everything. So mm. like, you know how, I guess if you are making art, 
there was at some point in the past five years where maybe it used to it used to get called art or it used to get called like what you said before creativity and now everything's just called fucking content i i despise the term content i fucking i i fucking hate that word because it it just yeah it lessens everything no Absolutely. like what You'd you know. do and what i do is so fucking different but what we both do is content now and it, yes. it, it, it i feel like that like lessens what you do it cheapens what i do it's just like it puts it puts like uh, a fucking artist that spends a hundred days on a painting for a post it puts that on the same level with me doing an instagram story about my penis it's like yeah. or it very different like a dog shit meme on the same level as like you who's like refined your stand-up bits you know yeah um, it's everything being content means that everything is like uh just forgettable and on the same thing which i guess yeah. it is you know like that's that's like our point of view of like oh i put so much heart and soul into what i do but at the end of the day no matter how hard you worked on your thing versus my thing to the person watching it it's just this yeah that's it yeah. you know it's my uh yeah entertainment for the day yeah, yeah. <laughs> no for, for the minute you know for really the fucking minute, isn't it yeah, yeah 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 and it's like yeah oh man uphill freaking battle but yeah. yeah like yeah you would 100 percent know it but yeah so like i guess i got a little bit pissed off at that and i was yeah. like oh why did this happen and mm. so i kind of pulled that thread and it traced me back to the renaissance and yeah. that awoken something in me like i really can't stress how much i didn't like art until i was 25 like i thought art oh, fucking sucked <laughs> um and then like the irony of becoming a professional illustrator is i think that's fun. like true of like almost everyone like with uh, mm. with art in particular i also thought the same thing cuz art was just yeah. homework do are you, you just going to gradually dude? get yeah. darker and darker until you just disappear? <laughs> when yeah, we started this, bright. it was daytime and now it's dark. Okay, we're bright again. Man, what a yeah, roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, here we go. All right. In the living room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was um, incidentally how I got my first animation job with the studio. It was someone's Zoom was outside and they just got way too dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they're like, oh, can you just draw me as if yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. daytime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. You know what I should I should commission from your animation studio? I found I mm. was thinking like, all right, let's say so the reason like I'm 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 recording this in uh what is it? Right now it's like May, but this mm. will probably come out sometime in June while I'm recovering from surgery. Mm. So I've got like six weeks of what you would call content, like kind of <laughs> backed up to cover my recovery. But I was yeah. thinking like what if it takes longer and I can't speak? So I found this like AI audio program where if I uploaded like 10 hours of podcasts, yeah. it would generate a voice that sounds exactly like me and I could type videos, right? And I did think, I wonder if I could just type a video, send it off to an animator and release like a video where it, it like sounds just like me, but people think I'm like that like an animated video essay YouTuber for a while. Like a PNG tuber. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like yeah. angry face, happy face. Like yeah, all yeah, of that. Yeah. 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 Thinky face. Like crossed, crossed arms when I'm making a conclusion, you know, and oh, then, oh, and oh. then I, I do this face when allegations about me come out. Yeah. <laughs> as, as they always do with those YouTubers. Oh yeah, man. Why is it that there's always PNG YouTubers? Yeah, like, there's a wrong. reason why they're hiding their face. I'll tell yeah, you that. Fucking oath, dude. Yeah. You ain't wrong. Mm. <laughs> so that's that'll be my commission for you what were we talking about the history of art yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah how did how did it go from like uh i'm gonna I, I might even just guess the whole thing how did it go from like people spending literally months uh, or decades of their time on like one or two pieces of art to us basically expected to, to create like six to ten things a day how yeah. does that happen? Is it yeah. just because it became more accessible and competitive and easier to create things? Pretty much, yeah. Like what you're looking at is kind of like a Cambrian explosion of like everything with the internet as well. So like if if you think about art as a transaction, like, you know, you get the art, you give a feeling theoretically, like the artist gets some sort of like fulfillment from that, sometimes money. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's sort of like an old method of how we can think about art. If you think about like content as a transaction, it's like I give you a little bit of time, the content creator gets stats, and now the facilitator or like the person who's uh, taken like the role of the gallery is like, you know, your social media platform and they mm. win as well, but they win the most because ultimately they're selling the transaction. Well, yeah. Like they fuck over the artist and the consumer because they mm. just, the, they for also, the, 
yeah. consumer, they just get their data sold to yeah. advertisers. And then for the artist, we just generally don't get paid fairly for yeah. our work or, or not paid at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, like there's there's obviously positives in the sense that, you know, if you and I were like 30 years younger or whatever, like we would have been struggling. We never would have made it. Yeah. No, yeah, we've been like seeking a gatekeeper and it would have gone to someone like infinitely more handsome. Like, yeah, yeah. 100%. I mean, yeah. that's why, that's the real reason I'm going through all these surgeries is just to come out the other end with a shot. <laughs> You're going to be a handsome <laughs> squid word. You're going to have yeah. like fucking like, ah. <laughs> Dude, I, I get to choose my next j- jawline. Like literally I get to go into the surgeon and he's going to, they're going to scan my head, the inside of and the outside of my head and my bone structure. And he has some program where me and him will design my new face. Like it's the Sims. Holy shit. That's like the start of Jimmy Neutron where he picks the hairstyles. Yeah. <laughs> let's, go, let's go. Let's go. And then you're yeah. just, what are you going to go with? Well, here's the thing. So he told me that a lot of, like he's a cosmetic surgeon as well. So he's told me that yeah. a lot of guys and girls come in for the, it's the first surgery doesn't do much for me. It's more so the yeah. second one. Yeah. Um, like, I've, I've looked it up and I've seen like the before and afters and some of the like, you know, the dramatic over and under by stuff is like yeah. hectic. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone comes out looking like good looking, like not better, just like yeah, good yeah. looking people. Yeah. So he's like, look, a lot of people get this just because they're insecure and they want to be more attractive. So oh. like you, like we can really choose how you want to look, but I've, I've never had a problem enough with my face where I've like, Oh, I've never thought, Oh, I wish I looked like this. So it's yeah. like such a weird choice to be thrust upon you. Like, if you've never really had a problem with how you look and then they go, all right, you get to look however you want. And I'm kind of like, Oh, I, I like how I look, but then, but then I'm kind of like, well, I, if I have this opportunity, I should take it. And so true. yeah, you know, but, it, but I, you know, my, my girlfriend's like, Oh, I, I don't want you to look too different. I like your face. And she keeps like looking at my face going, I'm trying to remember it. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know. What if I get out the other end and she'll she'll go? Oh, I wish I could forget that previous Lewis. <laughs> what would you What would you go for? Would you get like the Giga Chad sort of thing going on, or like? Well, I'm trying. I I have this thing where like, I don't think there is such thing as like a like a, a ten out of ten comedian. Like, oh yeah. Who, like, who is like who's like considered the comedian. hottest male comedian? Is I guess Pete Davidson, but but he's like sexy in an ugly, interesting way. Like he's definitely ugly hot. So even he's like, if you took him away and put him next to a model, he wouldn't match up. Yeah. But maybe like, if you're thinking about like stereotypical, like American jock looking, like maybe Tosh.0 might like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, he's like, pretty good looking. But he leans into like what you were saying about your braces and me and my tattoos. Like he leans into being a douchebag, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Like. So I, uh, like- what I've tried to do is me and my girlfriend, we're trying to find very attractive male celebrities that have a similar top half to me. Cause this and above doesn't change. Maybe like Adrian Brody, Adrian Brody. I need to look that up. Oh, he's my like- girlfriend. And it's- I don't know if this is like a huge compliment to the top half of my head, but she's gone. Ryan Gosling has a similar top. Oh, half. Yeah. 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 yeah I can like, see which that. is kind of like big forehead. And then, I guess like smaller eyes yeah. is kind of what it is. Ryan Reynolds as well. But yeah, with Gosling, I can say, I can say a bit of like. I thought Ryan Reynolds, Adrian yeah. Brody. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what? I reckon you're actually more on the money with Adrian Brody there. Oh, like in, yeah. if we're talking top half and eye shape. Yeah. 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 I like Adrian Brody a lot. I'm going to, I'm dude, literally. I like this head. Yeah, dude. He's got such a good head, right? Cause he's not, he's not like, uh, he's like creatively handsome. I reckon that's what I want to go for. Like yeah, some people, I want, some people will think I'm ugly. Some people will think I'm really hot. That's ideal that's for me. Thing, right? Like ugly. Mm. Hot is like, it's like a Adam driver, you know, Adam driver, Timothy Chalamet. Like yeah. you want a face that causes de- a lot of debate over mm. whether or not, like some people will be like, really fucking disappointed that you find that person attractive. Some people are like, I've been saying this. I told you he's hot. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's oh that's God. what I'm that's what I'm gonna go for. So I'm dude, I'm literally stoked that you showed me this because it's the first head that I kinda am like, I could still be funny with this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's sort of like uh, Anthony Jeselnik level of like attractive sort of Yeah, I think yeah, yeah you're totally right. Like Anthony Jeselnik, Tosh Poino, that's about as handsome as you can get before yeah. people look at you and go, you know, what are you doing up here? What you don't need to be here. Yeah, you you don't wanker. Here. Yeah, yeah. 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 But like both of those guys play a wanker, you know? Yes. Yeah. But, but it's funny it's because so they're, they're so not bad, hot people. enough to no. be that yeah. arrogant. Yeah. That's the, yeah. the so comedy true. in it. Like if you, if you mm. put like Jason Momoa, and yeah, he was playing that role. You would you would go, oh well, you're just a wanker because you're hot. Like yeah, you're exactly. up yourself. Fuck out of the club, hottie. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you're that's good. Yeah, and see, that's really what I needed. Is I needed someone with a visual eye to tell me what I could look like. Because mm. ah. what what you what you're doing is like drawing Lewis's head in different levels of attractiveness. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lewis if he was a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's your like Anthony Fantano light eight? You know. <laughs> That's I would love to be like a light eight, seven point yeah, yeah, nine, eight point one. That's what he called the new Kendrick album. So that's what you can be. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Yeah, dude, I I've been listening to the new Kendrick album. It's the first one that this is probably maybe why it, like people are saying it's Kendrick's weakest one because I, as a white Australian, can get around it. <laughs> you know because. The previous one, which was very much about like the African American struggle, mm. I didn't like it that much because I couldn't <laughs> relate to it at all. I I listened to it and I was like, "This album is not for me, literally. <laughs> like, it's not made for me." Yeah, yeah, and I feel know. like if if I listened to it and I loved it, he would be like, "Well, I, your name's not on it. Sorry, man, yeah. you shouldn't like it." You're just another white fan. I pull up on stage to say the wrong word, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's very good. I thought it was very interesting. This is the most irrelevant chat by the time this comes out. For us, the album came out a couple of days ago. But by the time this comes out, people are like, "Yeah, dude, we've heard all of the takes." Yeah, I thought the very interesting and brave of like my auntie is uh, a man now. Yeah, uh, auntie diaries. Yeah, that's my favorite track. A yeah. whole song about having two trans relatives. And yeah. being okay with it is very fucking brave as going like from, a yeah, rapper. The story of not being okay with it to being okay with it. And then like, yeah, I don't know. I heard a decent take where it's like, yeah, this isn't for trans people as much as for people who are outside of this community who Kendrick is trying to use like crude words in order to like bring them in and being like, yeah, yeah. was this now on this. Like, yeah, like I, I think a lot of, I, I've seen like a lot of discourse about people saying, oh, he shouldn't have said those slurs, uh, if he was trying to like push like a progressive accepting idea, but I kind of look at it as like, well, if you want to attract racist or transphobes, you've got to speak their language, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like if you want to get people on site, it's basic sales. It, it, like if you want to get someone to sales. like you, you got to talk like them. You got to get them on side and you got to go, uh, how are these fucking trannies? And then go, actually, you know what I've been thinking? I reckon they're cool. Yeah. It, it's also just like, generally good story structure you know what i mean it's like a story yeah. transformation if you're just holier than thou being like oh, literally a I lot of transformation in that song hey yeah that's true yeah <laughs> but like you know like if if your stance is like i've always thought this it's like eh, okay like that's not fucking mm. interesting you know if your stance was like man i used to say these words now i fucking like love my you know uncle and my cousin and yeah yeah i think i think it's cool it's like uh it's really what macklemore tried to do <laughs> Macklemore was a couple of F slurs away from. <laughs> yeah, like if if same love had a bunch of slurs in it, I like it. Maybe he could have incited some change. <laughs> that was Macklemore's mistake. He he didn't have enough slurs in that in that pro gay song. <laughs> it's so true, man. Yeah. <laughs> what am I saying? Yeah, it's so funny. It's I, so that's funny. why you're here, man. I'm just here to get you in trouble. Oh, dude, bring it on, man. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Lewis, let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 
This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Uh, Summer is coming. The sun is shining. Shirts are off and your balls are smooth. You heard that right. Your friends at Manscaped TM are here to make sure your beach balls are as smooth and as Floridian sand. Never been to Florida. I'll take their word for it. Uh, In summer, you want to kill some cold beers and barbecues, not kill the vibe with pubes peeking out of your swim trunks. That's why Manscaped TM has their performance package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. Dive headfirst into summer by joining the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped TM and get ready for hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code SPEARS. Talking points. Do not read. Host to talk about a time when he hurt his balls while trimming below the waist or a funny ball trimming story. How has Manscaped helped your confidence? Manscaped is uh, is really great. I The only time I ever truly hurt myself was when I went to one of those professional beard shaving places uh, and personal grooming stores and I paid like fucking... $250 for like some crazy razor that the woman tricked me into buying uh, and I went home and I was really excited to try it out and immediately skinned myself. It was horrible. Haven't done that with a lawnmower 4.0. I'll say that. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Anyway, the history of art. So how do, how do we get there? How did it evolve? Uh, yeah, well, in that particular video, I sort of took it back, I guess, to the idea of patrons and the Renaissance and sort of like art as a noble pursuit that could be fun, but also as like a bit of an exclusive pursuit that was only sort of like followed by like a certain amount. And then how Mm. this one fella in France during like the impressionist era called Paul Duran Ruel, he ended up pretty much creating like the modern gallery system. Cause at the Mm. time, like if you wanted to make art, there was like a sort of public body who would say, okay, if you've made the art, this is where the art goes. And it was very much controlled by the government. And so this guy's like, Uh, well, that is only available to a few artists and a few buyers. What if I create a little shop? And then all these other artists I know can put their art in the shop. Like, yeah, that's super obvious to us now, but like, that's uh, like a crazy idea back then. It's a crazy idea. And then he's like, oh, and I'll get a little bit of money for having the shop. So he, yeah. yeah, this starts pretty much like a wave of galleries and pretty much like the modern art movement. And, yeah. and this sort of keeps ticking along. You've got people who try to satirize it in the sixties, everything keeps going. And then ultimately the sort of like conclusion, I guess the sort of internet thing that I sort of say was like one of the inciting incidents was the okay go film clip where they're all jumping on the treadmills, you know, to hear it goes again. Yeah, yeah was- that was, that might have been like one of the first, you've just unlocked a memory. That was probably one of like the first like viral mm. like mm. things that wasn't good, you know, like on purpose. Like it wasn't like super yeah. planned out and like exactly. well structured. It was just, it was like a classic like 2010 YouTube video of like, oh, yeah, let's do man. something <laughs> stupid. Yeah, 100%. And so then like from that, there was basically a wave of like, and all of this is working in tandem. So you got like a wave of other indie bands being like, so you're saying all we need is a $200 camera and we can get 10 million views record deal. Fucking yeah. let's go. And so, yeah, yeah you got like this wave of basically people trying to go viral and realizing that content is an avenue to bypass gatekeepers. And there's kind of like this golden era, this like honeymoon where the internet had all this optimism for creators. And then yeah. that's yeah. when I started right there of like, ah. Oh, uh, if I, all I have to do is make good stuff and people will like it and who gives a fuck about gatekeepers mm-hmm. and, and even who cares about algorithms. And yeah. now that's starting to change where you almost have to, like I'm still doing what I want to do because I truly like believe in what I'm doing, but mm-hmm. I have to package that in a way f- that's essentially for algorithms. Yeah, yeah, which is like I guess kind of feels kind of shit. Uh, but also, I don't know, there's like, I understand it. Cause it's like, we well, they made the platform, I guess mm. this is what they want their platform to be. So I guess yeah, it's, it's like, it's I kind of, I kind of, I suppose I have a better version of it than a lot of creators because when I get to put on a show, mm. like that's a hundred percent me. I don't have to worry about community guidelines or algorithms or time limits or this or that. It's like, a space that I control and it's a show that I've written for a year. So it's like something that I get to spend time on and I'm truly proud of. Mm. Whereas 
you know, the nature of creating every day is every now and then you put up something that's like, yeah, this is all right. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like a lot of the time the me the methodology of content creation is uh, something's better than nothing. Yeah, which is kind of fucked. And I also yes. feel like uh, it's easy come, easy go. So if it didn't take you too long to make, you know, like what mm. you said before, you win someone for the minute. But usually if you've put a lot of effort or thought or care or even time into something like your stand-up specials, like then you usually win people for life. Like you came up in yep. a session last week because I was hanging up, hanging out with a friend of mine and oh, we, he was talking about like where the edgy Australian comedians. And I was like, Oh, check this out. And I showed him your dream world bit, which is like yeah. one of my all time favorite bits of yours. Oh, thank you. Yeah, dude. I just, Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fa <laughs> definitely a favorite of mine. Like that's kind of like, that's what I want to do. Like, yeah. That, yeah. That sort of like, like, bit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People uh, they laugh before they realize it's wrong, and you're yes. like, "Gotcha, bitch." Yeah, yes. <laughs> very good. Yeah, so um, I quite like that. Um, and yeah, and I showed him. I was like, "Yeah, this is fucking hot." And he was like, "Oh, cool. I'll check him out." But because you had put all that time and effort into crafting that good joke and into like your stage presence and persona, it wasn't just like I'd shown him content. And he's like, "Yeah, cool." It was like he's a comedian, you know, like, and he's like, oh, "Yeah, okay, cool. yeah." So. I yeah, I think I think that's that is like the respite you get as a creator of anything is mm. you have your you have your daily stuff and your weekly stuff that you just put out and it can be as it can ultimately it's it's as it's as good as you can make it like you put yes. a lot of effort into it it's as good as it can be um, but sometimes that's just like a seven and you put yeah. it out and people really appreciate it and it keeps people engaged but then I think you have to like have your like yearly project where you're like, this is the fucking thing. Like for you, it's a book Yeah. for like a really long, well-researched video about the history of art. Like it's a thing mm. that'll make an impact, something that's timeless. Cause yeah, that, that joke that you shared came out years and years and years ago and was written like a year before it was recorded. Yeah. And it still works today. Yeah. And that's because it's like, it was like the, the yearly thing that really I put four years into yes. so that it, will continue to work. Mm, mm. And like, you know, you give appropriate context in it and yeah, it's great. Yeah. And, and I, I guess that's like, it's, it's a weird thing of like, oh, so I mostly do this, but over here is what I actually do and what I see myself as. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's like the thing you do the least. And yeah. It's the thing you spend the most time on. And it's the stuff that's usually like seen the least I got lucky in, in the sense that that those jokes kind of went really well and they were seen. Yeah. But so often you, the stuff you put the most effort into is the <sighs> shit that's seen the least. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's cool to see like a lot of young, uh, like younger comedians sort of blowing up by putting their full mm. on YouTube. Like, uh, I yeah. watched Ryan Long's one the other night, white immigrant. He's great. Yeah. yeah he's a good great. friend. Dude. That's all. That guy is so fucking funny. Yes. Yeah. Man, <laughs> yeah yeah he's he's great he's i think i'm he might even be on the sh on the podcast at some point oh uh, in, so, in my regards yeah 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 he's uh he's really cool and and yeah that's like uh you know another example of a guy who maybe would not get a special from netflix that's until fun. you put it out yourself and yeah. then people that's kind of like i guess where it's the power is going into the creators yeah. A little thanks bit. To Schwartz. Cool. No, Schultz. Yeah, thanks to Schultz. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like he kind of like started that whole wave of comics just going, well, fuck mm. it, I'll put it on YouTube. Because it, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, the only real difference between Netflix and YouTube is just the money. And money's good, obviously. Like getting paid a bunch to do a special is great. But at the end of the day, a special is ultimately just an advertisement uh, for people to come and see you live. So if it's yeah. going to get the same amount of views, it's not the worst thing in the world to miss out on a on money from Netflix if you're still going to make the same impact, if not more of an impact than well, you would on yeah. Netflix. And you'll find it like a less gate-kept audience as well, um, which is lovely. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I would never turn down a comedy special from a big streaming network if it, oh. if it made sense, but yeah. like – if I'm going to get a million views on my channel to my audience and people like my audience versus, you know, 3 million on Netflix, but half of them or more than half of them go, Oh, this isn't really for me. And then a lot of them watch 10 minutes of it. And then you get like, maybe, I don't know, 
half a million people who genuinely fucking love it. It's almost is a better decision to have the views on your platform that you control where you have the whole message and you keep them there on Lewis Spears rather than on Netflix or HBO or whatever. I agree. Yeah. And then, yeah, that subscribe button's only like a click away as well. Yeah. Which is like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, you got it. So what, what are you, what are you kind of working on at the moment? Like, what are you, if, are you still in your journalism struthless phase? Uh, yeah, I think I will be all year to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm still in this um, weird documentary obsession. So I've got a couple of docos coming out um, oh. kind of saying, so I've got one on, do you know what corporate Memphis is? It sounds familiar. Oh my God, dude. Oh, no. uh, Okay. So I'll explain it to you. Then you Google it and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. And I swear to God, you will see this everywhere. It's like when someone says, Oh man, have you seen like a, a teal Suzuki Vitara? And then you're like, no. And then next minute you say fucking hundreds of them. Yeah. Uh, so corporate Memphis is an art style, which was sort of like made popular, I guess, in the late 2010s, which, yes. um, and it's sort of characterized by like big gooey shapes of people, but they've always got like really large, long legs. They're always hyper. Oh, bro. I hate that shit. It's yeah. everywhere. Sometimes called Facebook Allegria. Yeah. Yeah. And they've yeah. always got funny heads. Yeah. Um, so basically, yeah, it's pretty much like the world's most hated art style. So I'm making a full documentary on that and I'm like very fucking excited. Mm. <laughs> it'll be a nice, nice little taste. That's, that's cool. I love, um, that's like, I guess, maybe the artist version of a, like an incredible stand-up bit in the making where it's like you say something, have you noticed this? And no, and everyone goes, yeah, but I've never thought about it. <laughs> yeah. You know? And that's that art style where I've never, I don't know what that's called and I've never thought about it in my life, but you explain it and I go, oh, my God, that's everywhere. I see it all the time. Yes. And I fuck hate it. And it's like, yes. and trying to sort of, and like, there's so many reasons that we hate it. And I sort of try to unpack them in the doco, but like, yeah, it's kind of um, like a big one is it's sort of like this vision of a cultural utopia. It's almost like the 2020 version of the nuclear family. And it's like, look at yeah. us all holding hands. Aren't we great and awesome? You know? <laughs> yeah. And there's like, there's no races. Exactly. So it's like a, it's a world yeah. where yeah. no racism or cultural differences exist. So there's no problems, but also there's no personality. So you can just <laughs> apply yourself to that image, yeah. whether it's like me, an Australian guy, or like the world's most racist Asian man can yes. go, that's me. And yeah, that yeah, thing yeah. agrees with everything that I believe. 100 fucking percent. So it's kind of like this sort of like scattergun appeal to everybody. Come on, come on, like us. Cause like, yeah. like with all the sort of, I guess like, you know, companies saying like, oh, if we use actors, then people will criticize us for X, Y, Z. So mm. like end up like using just illustration, but then they're like, oh, if we use a normal body type, people will criticize us for this. So like, all right, well, let's abstract them. So they don't look like fucking anybody. All right, make them. Yeah. Purple. And then you're like, yeah, it just kind of ends up being like this symbol of difference. Yeah. yeah. And which I guess is what you actually uh, get. Oh, I've lost you. Oh, hello. Where, where hey, did we get okay, to? You're back. I, you, uh, you were describing, uh, people just, uh, that look like nothing people that are indescribable. Yeah. Yeah. And that how they just end up becoming these symbols of classist indifference. Mm. Yeah. Which I guess is like, like the bad reaction to criticism from like corporate businesses. Like if you criticize people for, not representing cultures or bodies or whatever, the result you want is inclusion. Yeah. Right. But the result that we're getting is exclusion of everyone. Yeah. So instead yeah. of including everyone and every type of person, they're going, what if we just had things that looked vaguely human and then humans can apply themselves to that rather than, seeing themselves like you are instead of seeing yourself in art and ads you apply yourself to it yes yeah 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 which We'd, is the smarter but definitely more evil way to do things it really <laughs> is and like you know comic abstraction is a normal technique that illustrators use like you know like a smiley face everyone sees themselves in but yeah. it's 
Like it's when, yeah, those aims are like <laughs> literally like countercultures of this fucking utopia that all of them present. It's when they're like, you know, like, hey, Spotify wrapped, we're cool. Also, we don't yeah. have artists, but like the world is so progressive and it's a utopia. Also, we're not going to pay you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That really, that is, that is the big secret is like, oh man, you love these artists, which is great because <laughs> we fucking don't. Dude, did you ever see that thing? I think it was like in 2015 or 2017 or something when the um, the CEO is just like, and this comes back to our content chat, he's just like, well, yeah, you know, you can't just, uh, you know, artists, it's it's actually their fault. You've got to, you got to constantly be releasing music, an album a year, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, bro, what the fuck are you trying to do? <laughs> and then like, you know, Kendrick wouldn't be Kendrick if he was releasing an album a year. Like <laughs> it's not, it's not possible like i could put out a comedy special every year mm. but mm. they wouldn't be great they'd be they'd be good enough you yeah. know they wouldn't be bad but they wouldn't be done yeah 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 and so we just end up with like heaps of mediocre art that serves the algorithms but yeah imagine yeah. imagine if that was the case whoa <laughs> i know yeah what would the world be like then but then but you know like that's like if you really do there are some genius artists that do play that game Mm. Uh, like Russ is a great example of yeah. that. Yeah. Where he, he didn't release an album. Every, well, he kind of released an album every year, but he released a song every week. Mm. And I actually, I always, before him, I always did look at musicians and be like, man, if musicians copied YouTubers in the sense that, you know, if a YouTuber can release a well-edited 10 minutes every week, an artist with, with the help of a producer can absolutely do a good song once a week. And I was always thought like, man, the first artist to do that is going to blow. And Cursor kind of did that. Yeah. Like he, he like when in 2012, like he did an album a year. And yeah. for the most part during that was releasing a, pretty much a song every month or even sooner than that at a lot of points. Oh, shit. Uh, and that, kind, that blew him up and that, yeah. you know, kind of, changed the entire Oz music scene and made it yeah. at the very least okay to listen to Australian rap. Yeah. Right? yeah. He didn't he, he got it to he got it to almost cool and then in came Islanders with knives. <laughs> and then it became cool for everyone to kind of listen to it. So fucking true. Yeah. yeah. Thank God um, it's cool. Yeah. Dude, it's great. I don't know I I always got frustrated when people would think that it was lame that I would listen to Australian rap. And it's like, fuck, man, I don't relate with people talking about shooting people with guns they got legally, okay? I want to hear about a guy who holds a gun that's 200 years old that he's unsure of whether it or not it'll fire and then decides to use a knife instead in a suburb that I've been to. That's <laughs> much more appealing. That's good. Which it's relatable. Uh, I grew up uh, in like uh, southeast, um, but I I always like, like uh, no. yeah, you're in Melbourne. I'm not gonna. I don't want to say the actual suburb, but I grew like grew up like southeast. I did not grow up in Frankston, but yeah. I uh, I have I always had family in Frankston, so I was there every week. And then when I was 18, I got a job in uh, in Seaford, so I've always kind of like been. I haven't didn't grow up here, but I've always been like here like all the time yeah yeah and yeah. then i ended up buying a house here and i rented here and then i bought a house here and now i am from well i live here i guess fucking awesome well done yeah, I, house. you're so young that's sick mate don't 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 congratulate me congratulate whoever in, invented ethereum it's ah, uh well, ah. i really wasn't my work I, I i got approved for the loan that was the real hard work but but uh vitalik buterin is the man i should be thanking fuck so are you on crypto money I was, and then I traded it for a house. Holy shit, dude! That's awesome. Good for you. I it's yeah, it's it's been great. Yeah, it's good. I've got, I got very very oh. lucky. I I put in the hard work, and I I did a lot of research, and I've been involved with it for a long time, and I lost a lot of money many times, but then I worked it out. Yeah. Wow. Good for you, man. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, I think I think it's important to to capitalize on opportunities, I guess, and then also you know the, there was like that big like. Uh, crash that happened with covid and i was like you know this doesn't happen all the time and i try i just did what i could and it ended up working so wow, you're switched on i love it 
So I try to be. I try to be. I was like, if I can't fucking do my job, I'm going to work out something else. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it turned out that something else was coins that don't exist and, and <laughs> pictures of cats and zombies <laughs> and shit. Sick. Yeah. Um, so that's so journalism's truthless is uh, I'm liking this phase. Yeah. What do you reckon? Do you, do you know what the next phase could be? Or uh, does it just thrust itself upon you? Like, I would love to see, like... Um, relatable dad's truthless oh god that's probably no. gonna be the you know you, you don't think you're gonna do that even with like a child coming into the picture put me down literally like <laughs> hate me to the vet <laughs> <laughs> i ever end up as relatable dad what you're what? not gonna you're not gonna fucking capitalize on your child and and like ruin their childhood by making them famous against their will no i'm gonna be like well you're a bad parent man that's what yeah. a child's for for yeah. likes <laughs> No, I'm going to be the opposite end of the spectrum, the self-righteous yeah. parent who's like, I good. don't have my child online, actually. Yeah, I think it's That's really good. Yeah, yeah, like you post like a, a real good. obnoxious photo of the back of their head and their hair is like style. way too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that. Or like, you know, people, you see like fucking hipster parents putting like emojis over their kids and I'm like, yeah, fuck, I just know that's going to be me and I know it's going to go straight to my head. And then I, time, like, I think that's how you have to do it, man. Than you. Yeah. yeah. I think especially like, especially when you have like an audience, exactly. It's, you know what it's, you know what it's like making, if you're an influencer or whatever you want to call it, if you're a person who has an audience and then you make an account for your baby, right? It's almost like just giving them a million dollars and then expecting them to not turn out like a wanker. <laughs> you know, like if you give a 10 year old, a hundred thousand Instagram followers, that's going to be a mean 10 year old, you know, just yeah. the same way as if you gave them, you know, a thousand dollars when they were nine, mm -hmm. it's not going to be a well-adjusted kid you're raising. It's going to be a famous monster. <laughs> where, where can, where can people find you, Cam? What's next for you? What are you working on? What can yeah. people purchase and buy? What content do you have a work on the shelves there? Yeah, I guess I'm sort of like over-indexing on YouTube this year. Um, mm -hmm. So check out my YouTube channel. Uh, God is Dead with Bryce. Um, that's real podcast. fun. That's podcast. Yeah. Yep. Um, when your jaw is good, we'll get you on. Yeah. Yeah. Give me yeah. give me like two months and, yeah, and I'll come right. on. I, I'm, I may be drooling and lisping, but oh. I'll, I'll be there. It'll be the, I guarantee it might be the worst and most gross auditory experience for the for your listeners. But I might have some good jaw themed cases for you. Yeah, sick. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. And then, um, other than that, I don't know. Uh, I guess yeah, all the regular socials that you use. Yeah, buy my shit. Yeah, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on. Check out Struthless on on every platform, and appreciate you coming yeah. on, dude. Uh, I'm looking forward to the the next phase of whatever the fuck you do next. Yeah, man. Well, next time we speak, you'll have a new jaw, and I'll be a dad. So amazing. So, All always right. a pleasure. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you. Bye. Great. Oh, he, he ended the call. Oh, <laughs> that's, I've never had someone do that before. They usually say goodbye to me in real life. <laughs> well, that's, that's very genuine, guys. I guess I'll end the show there. Bye.